Seven types of people we should not help. As children, we are taught to be kind, to lend a helping hand, and to share what we have with others. It's a beautiful lesson, rooted in compassion and the idea that we are all stronger together. But here's the catch. Most of us aren't taught when not to help. We're rarely told that kindness, when misdirected, can become a double-edged sword, leaving us drained, frustrated, and sometimes even enabling the very behaviors we hope to change. Think about it. Have you ever bent over backward to assist someone, only to watch your efforts go unappreciated or misused? Maybe they ignored your advice, wasted your time, or even blamed you when things didn't go as planned. The truth is, not everyone who asks for help truly wants to grow. Some seek attention, others an escape from accountability, and some simply thrive in chaos, dragging everyone around them into their storm. I learned this lesson the hard way. A close friend once came to me in desperate need of guidance. They were stuck in a cycle of bad decisions and wanted help to turn things around. I gave my all, advice, time, even financial support, but no matter what I did, they returned to their old habits. It wasn't until I stepped back and reflected that I realized the truth. They didn't want change. They wanted an escape from responsibility. I once read a quote that said, not all kindness is wise. It struck me because we often equate helping others with virtue, but blind generosity can do more harm than good. Helping someone who isn't ready or willing to change can become a black hole that consumes your energy, leaving you disillusioned and bitter. Worse, it can deprive you of the opportunity to help those who genuinely need and value your support. The Stoics understood this. They taught us to act with purpose and clarity, to evaluate where our efforts would have the greatest impact. It's not unkind to withhold help from someone who won't use it well. It's practical, even necessary. After all, true kindness isn't about saying yes to everyone. It's about discerning where your efforts will bring real growth and value. So while the world often tells us to help others without question, it's worth asking yourself, is this person truly ready to receive what I'm offering? Are they seeking solutions or just someone to share the weight of their excuses? Helping others is noble, but it's also an investment of your time, energy and heart. And like any investment, it should be made wisely. The following are seven types of people you should think twice about helping. This isn't about withholding compassion. It's about protecting your peace, respecting your limits, and ensuring your generosity is directed toward those who are ready to grow. Watch this video till the end to know when to draw the line. 1. The Chronic Complainers Complaining is a habit that, when unchecked, can consume both the complainer and everyone around them. Chronic complainers have a special knack for turning every silver lining into a cloud, and their relentless negativity is nothing short of exhausting. They don't seek solutions, they seek validation for their grievances, drawing you into an endless loop of problems with no end in sight. Picture this, a colleague comes to you every day, lamenting about their job, their boss, the coffee in the break room, and even the weather. At first, you listen patiently, offering advice, or trying to shift the conversation towards something positive. But no matter what you say, the complaints persist. They shrug off solutions, insisting that it's not that simple or you just don't understand. I once had a roommate who turned complaining into an art form. Every evening, he'd unload his frustrations about work, his family, or even the noise of the birds outside. One time, I suggested he talk to his manager about a workplace issue he'd been stewing over for weeks. His response? Why bother? It won't change anything. It hit me then. He wasn't looking for help. He was looking for an audience. The problem with chronic complainers is that they resist improvement. Their identity becomes intertwined with their discontent 
and solving their issues would strip them of the very thing they cling to most, the ability to lament. Helping them feels like trying to fill a bottomless pit. No matter how much energy you pour in, it's never enough. Marcus Aurelius wisely advised, the impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. Chronic complainers don't see obstacles as opportunities. They see them as insurmountable walls. And worse, they drag you into their bleak worldview, making it harder for you to focus on your own goals and happiness. Setting boundaries is crucial. If someone is determined to complain without taking action, it's not your responsibility to fix their outlook. Redirect your efforts to those who are open to change and who value your input. Chronic complainers will resist your help at every turn and engaging with them only feeds their cycle of dissatisfaction. Sometimes the best way to help a complainer is to step back. Let them sit with their grievances while you preserve your energy for those who are ready to embrace solutions. You can't control their mindset, but you can control whether you let their negativity seep into your life. Protect your peace. 2. Desperate people Desperation is like a tornado. It sweeps through, destroying everything in its path, including your good intentions. People gripped by desperation make wild, irrational choices that can drag you into their whirlwind of chaos. Helping them often feels like trying to put out a fire with a teaspoon of water, futile and exhausting. Take Sarah, for example, a friend of a friend I knew back in the day. Her life was a circus of overdue bills, toxic relationships and frantic phone calls that always began with, I need a huge favor. One month, she begged for help paying rent, sobbing about how her landlord was practically a villain. Feeling like the good Samaritan, I lent her the money, only to discover later she'd spent half of it on an impulse weekend getaway, because in her words, I just needed a break from all the stress. Desperate people are experts at making their emergencies your emergencies. They'll tug at your heartstrings with stories that could rival a soap opera, and before you know it, you're caught up in their mess. But here's the thing, their chaos isn't temporary, it's a lifestyle, lost a wallet. They'll cry to you about how the universe is always out to get them, while conveniently forgetting that they've lost four wallets this year alone, need a loan. You're basically signing up to be their personal ATM. Desperate people don't just need a solution, they need a hero, and once you step into that role, you'll find it impossible to step out. The truth is, helping them isn't as noble as it seems. It often enables their poor decisions, leaving them stuck in the same loop while you're left drained and frustrated. Stoicism reminds us to focus on rationality and self-discipline, qualities that desperate people often lack. As Marcus Aurelius wisely observed, you have power over your mind not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. Instead of feeding into their panic, guide them toward long-term solutions. Offer advice, not handouts. Support their growth, not their chaos. And most importantly, protect your own peace. Desperation might be contagious, but clarity is your best defense. 3. The Narcissist They are magnetic, charming, the kind of people who light up a room and make you feel like you're the most important person in the world for a while. Helping a narcissist can, at first, feel exhilarating. Their gratitude comes with a certain flair and their ability to make you feel seen is intoxicating. But soon the cracks begin to show and you realize you weren't helping a person. You were feeding an insatiable void. Have you ever known someone who made everything about themselves? A friend, perhaps, who sought your advice, your time, your energy, only to twist the focus back onto their needs, their struggles, their triumphs. You might bend over backward to support them, but when the tables turn and you need help, they vanish, leaving you questioning why you bothered in the first place. 
I once worked closely with a charismatic colleague who seemed to value my input on a high-stakes project. He called me a lifesaver, praising my insights and thanking me for my dedication. I stayed late, pouring my expertise into his success, but when the moment came to present our work, he hogged the spotlight, passing my contributions off as his own. My stomach dropped as I realized the truth. I had been nothing more than a stepping stone on his path to recognition. Narcissists are like mirrors that only reflect themselves. They don't see you as a person, they see you as a means to an end. Your kindness becomes a currency they use to fuel their endless quest for validation, leaving you emotionally bankrupt. The more you give, the more they take, and the less you have left for yourself. Helping someone who thrives on manipulation isn't just draining, it's dangerous. Narcissists will twist your generosity into a tool for their own gain, leaving you tangled in a web of self-doubt and frustration. They don't want to grow, they want to control. And in the end, you're not helping them, you're enabling them. Stoicism offers a critical lens here. Focus on your own virtue, not the praise or acknowledgement of others. As Epictetus wisely said, what is within my control, only myself. You can't fix a narcissist, nor should you try. They thrive on people who let them take too much, and they crumble when met with firm, unyielding boundaries. So how do you deal with them? Stop playing their game, draw a line they cannot cross, let them see that your kindness isn't a blank check for their ego, but a deliberate choice for those who truly deserve it. And when they inevitably turn to someone else for supply, remember this. You've protected your peace, your energy, and your worth. That's a victory no narcissist can steal. Fourth, victim-minded people. You know the type. Every setback in their life is someone else's fault lost their job. It's because their boss just didn't like them, not the missed deadlines or three-hour lunch breaks. Mr. Train. Clearly the universe is conspiring against them. It has nothing to do with leaving the house five minutes late. Every storm cloud carefully curated by the universe to rain specifically on them. Victim-minded people don't just encounter problems, they collect them like trophies, proudly displaying their grievances for all to see. And here's the kicker. They want you to applaud their suffering while solving their problems for them. Imagine this. You encounter a co-worker who sighs dramatically at every meeting. Concerned, you ask what's wrong. They launch into a monologue about how the boss has it out for them. The coffee machine is conspiring to ruin their mornings. And the universe itself just doesn't get them. You suggest solutions, talk to the boss, try a new coffee shop, but they dismiss every idea with you just don't understand. Or the relative who insists their financial woes are the fault of greedy landlords while conveniently forgetting the months of unpaid rent spent on lavish dinners. It's almost impressive how effortlessly they sidestep any responsibility, turning every inconvenience into a personal vendetta orchestrated by fate it's exhausting, isn't it? Victim-minded people are masterful at manipulating empathy. They know how to tug on your heartstrings with their tales of woe. At first, you feel for them. Their struggles seem so real, so unfair. But then you notice the pattern. No matter how much you help, they remain exactly where they started, sometimes even further back. Why? because they're not looking for solutions, they're looking for sympathy. Helping them is like trying to pull someone out of quicksand while they're actively clutching at vines to stay stuck. They don't want to climb out, they just want company in the muck. And if you dare step back to save yourself, they'll guilt trip you faster than you can say, I'm out of here. Stoicism teaches us to value personal accountability Epictetus wisely observed, we suffer not from the events in our lives, but from our judgment about them. Victim-minded people cling to their judgments like a life raft, unwilling to see that their perspective is what's sinking them. 
Helping them only reinforces their belief that the world owes them something. Here's the harsh truth. You cannot save someone who refuses to stand on their own. They don't need your solutions. They need to confront their mindset. The best thing you can do. Offer them a mirror instead of a hand. Let them see their role in their struggles and then step back. Stop setting yourself on fire to keep them warm. Save your compassion for those ready to take accountability and change. And if you feel guilty stepping away, just remember this. The energy you waste on someone clinging to victimhood is energy you could use to build something far more meaningful, your peace. 5. Self-righteous people Self-righteous people carry an air of invincibility. They believe they know better, always. Their opinions are gospel, their methods untouchable, and their worldview impenetrable. Offering help to someone like this feels like shouting into a void. Your words dissolve into nothingness, unheard and unacknowledged. They wear their moral superiority like a badge, blind to the arrogance it radiates. Imagine you have a relative struggling with their finances. You kindly suggest budgeting tools or practical steps to ease their burden. Instead of gratitude, you're met with resistance. I don't need your advice, they declare, as if your well-meaning suggestion is an affront to their dignity. Weeks turn into months, and their struggles continue, but they remain stubbornly glued to their ineffective methods. It's frustrating to witness, isn't it? Helping a self-righteous person is like trying to fill a cup that's already overflowing with their opinions. No matter how insightful your advice or how genuine your intentions, they dismiss it as unnecessary or even intrusive. They don't seek help. They seek reinforcement of their belief that they're already doing everything right. What's maddening is their inability to recognize that their stubbornness is the source of their stagnation. They are cemented in their ways, impervious to growth or change. Any attempt to introduce a new idea is treated as an assault on their pride, creating tension where there could have been progress. Your energy becomes wasted effort, and their problems remain unsolved. Stoicism offers a profound truth here. Humility is a cornerstone of wisdom. Marcus Aurelius once wrote, If anyone can prove and show to me that I think or act in error, I will gladly change. This openness to correction is what separates the wise from the self-righteous. The latter reject wisdom not because it's unhelpful, but because accepting it would mean admitting they were wrong. So what should you do? Step back. Preserve your peace. Save your efforts for those who are willing to listen and learn. A self-righteous person's resistance is not your failure. It's their choice. Let life be their teacher, for it is far more persistent than any advice you could offer. And while they cling to their flawed certainty, you'll have the freedom to invest your energy where it truly matters, in people who are ready to grow. 6. Doubtful People Doubtful people live in the shadow of their own insecurities. They question everything, your motives, your advice, even their own ability to succeed. Their self-doubt acts as a barrier, preventing them from fully accepting your help or applying it in meaningful ways. Have you ever tried encouraging someone who constantly second-guesses themselves? You tell them they're capable, that they have the skills to succeed, but they respond with endless, what ifs? What if I fail? What if this doesn't work? Their doubt is a weight dragging down both of you. Years ago, I worked with someone who wanted to start her own business. She had the talent, the resources, and even a clear plan. But every time I offered guidance, she hesitated. I'm not sure it'll work, she'd say. No matter how much I reassured her or how many solutions I provided, her fear of failure kept her stuck. Eventually, I realized that no amount of encouragement could overcome her refusal to believe in herself. Doubtful people often drain your energy without realizing it. 
Their constant need for reassurance becomes a cycle. You give advice, they hesitate, and the process starts over. They're trapped in their own minds, and until they decide to break free, your efforts will go to waste. Epictetus wisely said, first say to yourself what you would be, and then do what you have to do. Doubtful people struggle with the first step. They're so paralyzed by fear that they can't commit to change, no matter how much help you offer. Helping them requires boundaries. Offer support, but don't let their doubts consume you. Encourage them to take small steps to build confidence through action. But understand this, you can't carry someone who refuses to walk. At some point, you have to let go. Their journey is theirs to take, and their doubt is theirs to conquer. You can guide them to the starting line, but the race is theirs to run. Save your energy for those who are ready to move forward, not those who remain tethered to their fears. 7. Quitters There's nothing more frustrating than helping someone who gives up at the first sign of difficulty. Quitters lack resilience, and their unwillingness to persevere makes your efforts feel futile. They'll ask for your support, take it, and then abandon the task as soon as it becomes challenging. Imagine mentoring someone through a tough project. You invest your time, share your expertise, and cheer them on. Then, halfway through, they throw in the towel. It's too hard, they say, as though effort itself is an unreasonable demand. All your energy and enthusiasm go to waste. I once volunteered to help a neighbor renovate his garage. He had grand plans, repainting the walls, installing shelves, and organizing tools. I spent my weekends hauling supplies and brainstorming ideas with him. But the moment we hit a snag, he lost interest. Weeks later, the garage was still half finished, and I realized I cared more about the project than he did. Quitters often lack the grit to see things through. They expect quick results and become discouraged when success doesn't come easily. Helping them can feel like trying to row a boat while they're busy drilling holes in the hull. Stoicism values perseverance and inner strength. Seneca wrote, difficulties strengthen the mind as labor does the body. Quitters avoid difficulties, robbing themselves of growth and robbing you of your time. Before helping someone, consider their track record. Are they committed or do they have a history of giving up? Your energy is precious. Don't waste it on someone who isn't willing to put in the effort. Helping a quitter can teach you an important lesson about priorities. Focus on those who value your support enough to persevere, even when the road gets tough. Growth requires effort, and effort deserves respect. Choose wisely. Conclusion. Helping others is a noble act, but it must be done with wisdom and discernment. Not everyone is ready for the help you offer, and some people will drain your energy without ever taking meaningful steps to change their lives. Stoicism reminds us to focus on what we can control, our own actions, choices, and well-being. In every interaction, ask yourself, is this person truly willing to grow, or are they seeking to transfer their burdens onto you? By learning to recognize the narcissist, the self-righteous, the victim-minded, the desperate, the doubtful, the quitter, and the chronic complainer, you protect not only your time, but also your peace of mind. Helping others isn't about being a savior, it's about empowering them to stand on their own. Reserve your efforts for those who are ready to rise, and don't hesitate to walk away from those who refuse to help themselves. Remember, your compassion has value, but so does your energy. Choose wisely where to invest it, and you'll find yourself surrounded by people who appreciate and grow from your support.